Hey there viewers, welcome back to Super Mario Diagnostics once again. Today we got my buddy here, Herb. Morning uh, everybody. Who's also my coworker, And he's gonna run us down on how to access the steering lock on Mercedes. We get this, I get this question a lot actually. And um, in, in most cases, a lot of people will remove the steering column completely and do it on the bench. But there's a way around that and uh, I'll let Herb take it away. Well, I don't like removing the column. It's a lot of stuff to go on in there and take it all out and out of the car and unplugging and plugging stuff back in. So I like to cheat a little bit. So we have two cars actually here. We have one car that has a manual column and we have one car that has an electric column. Now the manual car column is much easier to do and I wish all the cars were like that. Alrighty guys, we sort of cheated. We didn't know we were gonna make this video. Um, I've already removed the steering lock on this car. This trim is a little different than most. Um, it can be a little daunting and you can see over here in the corner that this trim has already been broken so this was pre-done I didn't do it even though I am a mauler but it wasn't me <laughs> so we take a wedge under here and we remove this trim we get it up out of the way now on the AC unit you're gonna have a plug that's plugged in there just unplug that and get that out of the way and then you're gonna want to remove this lower trim and this slides out this way to you and somebody has already broken the clip off the back of this, so it made it much easier for me to remove it. And this is the trim ring around this. You're gonna pop this out, and you're gonna pull this forward over the column. Now, you say, oh, the ignition switch doesn't move, but the column will move forward. It's manual underneath here to release. You're gonna pull the column all the way out to you, and you're gonna put it all the way in the up position because the column is bolted to a frame in there. So it has four bolts. You're gonna unbolt that. I put in two long guide bolts and the bolts that are closest to you underneath the column. So it keeps it sort of in a relative position. So down in the hole, unfortunately, I've already moved the steering lock, but down in there is where the steering lock sits. And I keep it bolted in to give it more rigidity so I can drill it out. We're going to go to the bench and I'm going to show you where I drilled out this particular lock and removed it. And then from here we're going to go to the other vehicle with the much more difficult column which is electric and we're going to drill that one out for you guys and remove it. Some of the tools I use, number two Phillips and the big screwdriver so you can reach in there and you can manipulate some things. We'll show that in a minute. Your 12 Torx. 12 torques on a swivel, some longer bolts that I stick in there on the end of the shaft to hang it down so I can leave the column sort of where it is, don't have to move it too much. A uh, couple different drill bits, I usually don't use these but this is just in case because you never know what's going to happen, you may need a little bigger hole. Um, I've had this little contraption made from one of these drill bits and I put a little end on it to hold the drill bit to make everything slim and a little dum-dum to hold it in place and this will be the drill bit for the final hole that I use and this I'll be sticking in one of my screwdrivers and be manipulating a little wheel in there so let's go over to the locks now this is the lock out of the car that's out there with the manual and there's the hole I drilled move the wheel to release it so what you do is the steering lock is facing you in this direction and you've drilled your hole and I will take my number two Phillips and I will turn it into the hole and inside here there's a wonderful little tiny wheel with some gears on it. So those gears and you want to take your pinion shaft on your ring and get in there and lock it. And you're going to turn it. Which is going to release the wheel that's inside here for the lock. So here we have one exposed. And the reason that is, is these two little indentations here, which are stopping you from pushing the bolt in. 
So you're going to stick your screwdriver in there and you're going to turn this wheel. And this wheel is going to go upwards. It's going to pull this rod up and that's your lock. Now once the lock is up and out of place, you can push your bolt in. Now in the car, it's spring loaded so it can be a little tricky. So when it's in the car, you want to use your flathead screwdriver or any pushing object and you're going to push on it and you're just going to pull it up and once you pull it up you can release your lock out of the holder because it's in a specific little area and you see what happens to the lovely things it gets fried on the board which is attached to the motor so the motor doesn't spin anymore so you can't release it this one here I actually drilled it in two holes I was too far up in the corner on this one, so I couldn't spin the wheel. So I had to come down just a little bit to get to the area of the wheel. And you want to not be too far over, because you have a pin you'll be drilling directly in. So on this one, I just missed the pin, and I went down and I got the wheel. So I was able to put the screwdriver on the wheel, and I was able to turn it. When you're drilling, it's very important. Don't push too hard. You're going to go through the metal case. And when you go through the metal case, you're going to have a plastic board. You just want to break through on the plastic board. You do not want to hit the wheel. This one, if you can see, the wheel got damaged from the drill bit. So it made it a little difficult to do. And that's when you may need to require the flathead screwdriver to get in and wedge in between it and actually push on the plastic to push it in this direction through the little hole. So let's get out there and let's drill this difficult one that I really wish it wasn't difficult. <laughs> <laughs> Alright guys, here we are in this lovely car in this wonderful column that I wish I didn't have to do. So you gotta remove your under panel which we already sort of pre-did. And then back under here is a little brake cover. Make sure you unplug the uh, brake pedal sensor and remove your two covers. Because we're gonna gain access to the bolts under here. Now, if your column isn't working, activate your door latch, open it. You'll see that the cluster woke up and the steering column did go in the upward position. And we just wanna make sure it's all the way out And it is up because you're going to need the room because on this particular model they put a knee airbag inside here with electric cards with electric column and the area between where you need to drill is much tighter and it can be difficult and our trim ring will pop forward on the bottom and then down a little bit on top and then forward out and then our trim ring around the column just pull it together it snaps out pull it all the way forward. Now we have two bolts that are here and two bolts on the main shaft down here. What I usually do is I will take out these longer bolt, the shorter bolts, excuse me, leave the longer bolts in there and I have some bolts that are a little longer so I can drop down the column, sort of keep it centered, a little easier for me, I'm old. Well, here we go with our swivel, and we're going to remove these two here. Sometimes I can get them from this side, sometimes I have to go to the other side. And there's one. And I'll usually take the longer bolt that I have, and I'll just put it in there in a couple turns. And we'll move over to the other side. Remember there are wires in here. Be mindful of your wires. That one is out. Put a longer bolt in. Alrighty. Now we'll take out our other two. 
12 torques. And you can always use your electric ratchet to make it a lot quicker. Just be careful reinstalling them. You don't want to cross thread anything. All right, now our column is loose. And as you can see, the hole is much smaller here than it is on the other one. And we're gonna need to angle the column a little get, bit to get a good drill hole on this one. I really hate doing it on this one. It can be a pain. Sometimes I do have to remove the steering wheel. So we'll see what we can do. See how my angle is. Yeah, I don't like the angle, so I'm going to remove the steering wheel because I don't want to damage any of the surface on this. All right, so we got a couple more tools because this one's going to be a little bit of a pain. And like I said, these electric column ones are more of a pain. The other one is much more easy. There's a lot more room in there, and I don't need to do a lot of these things. Um, so we got a couple very old pieces of wood here so we can stick in there to try to give us some space in there to drill to keep it pushed away from the top part of the column to the lower part of the column to make access to the lock. Some tape, a little protectant, and a 30 Torx and a 10 Allen. And we're going to remove the airbag and remove the steering wheel. We don't want to damage it with the drill. We look in here, we have usually some marks. Sometimes there's no mark, so I usually try to make a little score mark on the big groove. So there's the big groove, the mark, and I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little mark in there. little tape so I'm going to take one of these variable pieces of wood here and I'm going to try to jam it in there just to pull the back of the column down a little bit so I can get a better angle at the lock and I'm going to be working through a little hole in here like I said this is the most difficult one these electrical columns cars So we're going to try to go over to the right side as high as we sort of possibly can go because you can't get as much angle on this one as the other one because the column does not drop down far enough.
And I think we'll be able to get the big bit on that one. Okay, hangs up. We know we're just gonna about, get about to break through. Let's take a little peek. How far did we go through? Okay, we're right at the green board. Oh, and it looks like I can see part of the little white wheel in there. Let's see if we get lucky and everything goes good. Just remember, this is all luck. There's no skill in this. We want to get it as over as much as we can because it has to pull that rod upwards to clear our little bolt that we need to get to. And sometimes you can get lucky and you have enough space where you can actually put the blade between one of the gears and you can actually even turn a flat bladed screwdriver to turn the wheel. I think that might be all the way over. I think I'm in the gear. And you see how it is, I think, completely done. Once it gets to its end point, you should not be able to turn it anymore. So I think that might be it, unless I'm binding on something else. There's our steering lock is out. One hole, one man, one lock. <laughs> All right guys, so you obviously you don't want to drill this if it's unlocked because you can obviously remove the bolt and take it out of the column with just dropping the column and slide this thing out. So the customer wanted a new lock, so we drilled it out, removed the lock, we're putting a new lock in it. Now, if it was in the unlocked position, you could possibly get away without removing it, but if it's unlocked, you can remove it. But some people, I have seen it in there with an emulator installed. This is driven off of a worm gear, off of the side of this. So if it's unplugged and no power is going to it and it's in the unlocked position, the chance of it locking itself again is very, very remote. So you could just, in a sense, leave it in there, unplug it, and put your emulator in if you would like. But there could be safety reasons. Your steering doesn't lock anymore. If you have inspections that require a steering lock, of course it's gonna fail. And emulators are not 100%, they are also known to fail. So never rule out an emulator. And even though you may hear just zzz, doesn't mean it does not have an emulator. <laughs> and I have seen steering locks just zip tied to the side of the column where somebody did not reinstall it. So the choice is up to you. Here's the one we just took out. Here's the one out of our other car. Both of them out. There you go. So in a nutshell, removing the lock without removing the column. I hope this helps some guys. Um, it is a TPR part. So you do have to get authorization from Mercedes to replace this. And you need a programming key to put in the new lock. And last but not least, if you guys have any doubts or whatnot, you can come visit us. We're Autobahn Performance. We're down here in Fort Lauderdale. Just look us up. We're here to help. Never, 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 uh, that's all, folks. No, just... <laughs> <laughs> uh, that about wraps it up. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Uh, leave uh, a comment in the comment section. See what you think about Herb. Maybe we'll bring him back more often, right? And uh, thanks, Herb, for doing this. I really You're appreciate welcome. it. You're welcome. Super Mario. It was a pleasure. <laughs> and everybody out there, I hope you have fun and enjoy. I'll catch you all next time. Okay, guys, you running? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> okay guys, um, we did this before in the beginning, but we didn't show you this. We did check the fuses to the EIS and the steering lock, but since we've been messing around with it, you never know what could happen. So you want to double check it before you install the new steering lock. So it's a C-Class 204 chassis, and usually it's going to be fuse 19 and 27. Always look it up just to make sure. So here we are in 19, we have power, 
on both sides and then we'll go to 27 and we have power on both sides and you're going to want to hook a little jump box to this or whatnot to keep the voltage up um, i'm going to cheat i know the voltage is okay it'll program this without an issue so have your keys on hand you're going to get your steering lock and your key it's going to be a blue key an orange key a green key the color could change but this is the programming key so just double check on each of these is the VIN number for the vehicle on the lock and the key make sure they match the vehicle you don't want to put it in and find out you have the wrong key for the wrong lock otherwise nothing is going to work now I'm going to install this but I'm not going to fully install this I am just going to plug this in and let it hang from the column and do a couple function checks to make sure it still works you'll be able to install this with no problem because once it is unlocked you just unplug it it will stay unlocked and you will slide it into the column and install everything back the way we took it apart so let me just check my numbers here and my numbers are good I should be nice with the box because they're gonna probably want it back because I believe there is a core charge on some of these I know there is a core charge on the key we do not charge the customer for the key because it is returned so here's our new lock and you can see it is unlocked and we have our little connector down here for the steering lock plug it in we have our programming key but before I stick the key in I want to make the car a little active I want to wake up the cluster and wake up the can so I'll go to the door latch I'll latch it I'll unopen it and our cluster is live so in here we have a little light that's gonna light up when we stick it in and it's out I always just turn it for giggles you don't have to remove it I don't know if you've heard the steering lock but now it is locked so here I'll take the one of the keys it unlocked I will start it. It may stall and start. And it's learning the key. Unlocked. Pull it out. It locked itself again. Stick the other key in. It unlocked. See how it wanted to stall? The key is learning itself. It's learning its to the ME transmission anything it needs to communicate to now if I undo it it's locked again so I'll stick it in I'll unlock the key with we'll unlock the lock excuse me we'll unplug it and now it is still unlocked and I can install it in the column and then put it back together the other thing that is important is go with your computer and check and make sure the VIN is written to the steering lock and the EIS if the VIN is not written to it you must write it you could have problems in the future by not writing the VIN to the EIS and the lock hopefully it'll automatically do it with the programming key and you will have nothing to do and then you'll clear all your codes and you should be good to go